Welcome to Module 1 for Scenic Design. In this module, I'm going to introduce to you the various steps a scenic designer takes in preparing the finished scenic design for the live production. First step is to read the script. This shouldn't become a surprise to you because that's the first step for most of the areas of a theater production. But let's read this together, and I'm going to kind of talk about what I see as a scenic designer, what I would capture from this and start thinking about. The lights go up on the empty kitchen. Ding, 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 ding. First thing, I've got, I'm in a kitchen. I see that. Uh, it is a late afternoon. Uh, this is really more of a lighting note, but... Um, in my mind, I'm going to say, okay, I probably want to suggest there's a window in this room so I can show um, a little bit of light outside, allows the lighting designer to help create the mood outside and allow us to know what time of day it might be. Let's continue reading. Lenny McGrath, a 30-year-old woman with a round figure and face. Now those are costume and makeup notes, but the next statement is, enters from the back door carrying a white suitcase, a saxophone case, and a brown paper sack. Back door. That suggests something to me as a scenic designer. People have to be able to get in and out of this uh, set, this kitchen, through a back door. And I'm assuming there's probably going to be uh, a hallway or another exit out of this room. That'll probably come up later as we look at the, the script. Um, but back door suggests to me quickly, uh, if there's a kitchen with a back door, I already know I'm in a period kitchen because not all kitchens today have back doors. Let's continue reading. She sets the suitcase and the sacks case down and takes the brown sack to the kitchen table. Ah, a table. This also suggests a time period because um, a lot of kitchens today don't have kitchen tables in them. We often go into a dining room to eat. So again, something about this, a back door, a kitchen table in the kitchen, shows that this is a more of a living kind of space kitchen that is true to some different period. After glancing quickly at the door, she gets the cookie jar from the kitchen counter, a box of matches from the stove, and then brings both objects back to the kitchen table. This sentence suggests there is a kitchen counter on which the cookie jar resides, and that there is a stove. Um, and a box of matches next to it, which suggests it's a gas stove. So again, the script is giving me clues about this environment and what's going on. Now, we'll stop there. We're not going to go through the whole script together. That'll be just a little boring at this point. But um, I will start taking notes on all this into what is called a script breakdown. So this is the form I use a lot. It's a, an Excel form. Uh, spreadsheet and you'll see why in just a minute I like using this. First on the left hand column you'll see I'm just going to number each of my notes one two three four so I'm just keeping track of them. I will de then designate what act and scene it is. And this is just here's a lot from just the prologue of the script which is page or line number one and then the reference itself tell me um, what that actually says. Um, and if you go down about a third of the way, you'll see that I'm actually quoting some lines from the show. Now, this is from The Count of Monte Cristo, not from the script that we were just looking at. It's a different show. Then I will mark down. Um, so let's go down one, two, three, four, five of those lines down to number five. And that note on bleeding through slowly at first is the silhouette of Napoleon. And that description starts giving me an idea that I think costumes is inter in, interested in this. I think that the set is interested. Lighting is interested in this. But you'll notice I have columns for makeup. I have columns for props and columns for sound. Now, I don't have to have all those columns. If I'm just the scenic designer, do I really care what costumes and makeup looks like? Actually, I do, because um, notes to costumes and makeup might denote colors that I have to be aware of that will be on my set. Um, it also might suggest shapes or period that I need to influence the design. So I tend to mark down each of the areas. Besides the fact that I know I'm in a collaboration, I'm working with other artists, and if I create a sheet that lets me know what everybody else is doing, I'm a more viable player in that collaboration. My next column is questions that pop to mind. Oh, are we going to have an act curtain? 
or are we going to just have the curtain open when the audience comes in? Um, it states curtain going up. So the script suggests there's a curtain, but are we indeed going to use one? As I go all the way down, a crow's nest. Is that a must? Do there have to be a crow's nest on this ship? Um, is the star visible to the audience? Uh, is that something that um, they look out into the audience and see it? Or do they look up behind them and the audience sees it with them? So these are all questions that I would bring up to a director in a production meeting. And then on the right, I have notes to myself. I'm getting an idea of what do I need to look to? Do I need to use a scrim? Do I need to um, have a picture of the island in the distance? Things that I want to start thinking about as a scenic artist. Now, this is only a, a glimpse of this show. This show had a lot of locations. Um, once I've got this completely done, as I recall, there were probably three to four hundred notes that I took on this script. Then I can sort each of the by each one of those columns. I would obviously want to uh, do one sort by the column set, pulling out all the set notes for myself. Now that I've sorted it, now you'll see the importance of why it was important for me to know the reference and to know what line or page number that is in the script, because then I can go back and find it. I could also sort it by questions, so that when I go to the next production meeting, I have um, all the questions right at my fingertip of the questions that I have, where they are in the script, and what I really kind of need to know. After I've done that kind of sorting, I'm going to probably want to put this breakdown back in its original order, which is why I have the far left-hand column. So now I can sort it back by the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and get it back in the order it was in. So this is an example of a um, script breakdown that I like to do. Next, I'll take that breakdown and create what I call the master scene list. In this sheet, I take information from the original breakdown, so I have references again to the lines and pages, and I start denoting what the actual locations are. That's what the location column talks about. If you go down past all the zeros, you'll see that the first real um, location is the Port of Marseille for This is the Count of Monte Cristo, which was actually the scene breakdown we looked at. Number two is a rooftop garden at night. Number three is Viafort's office. Number four is the church. Um, so get, I'm getting an idea of how many locations I have. And you can see the numbers continuing down the page. This show had a lot of different locations. Then in the column needed, I'm going to actually put in ideas of what I think needs to be in that scene. Because um, as we start looking at, um, well, let's, let's drop down to number five, no, number six, uh, the Chateau d'If, that I, there needs to be a tower, something, stage right or stage left. I need to create a prison. There needs to be a banner. There needs to be a chair. Um, so I'm denoting the things that I think need to kind of sort of be in that location. Now, the Count of Monte Cristo was a musical, so that's why I have a column on the far right called Music that just kept track of the different songs that were in each of those scenes. I obviously wouldn't need that for a show that's just a straight play. I would then go into production meetings with my breakdown and with my master scene list so we can start having discussions about what we want to do for the scenic design of this show, how many sets we need. Um, I, I'll get the answers to my questions from the director. And then once I've got a better idea of the time period, I'm going to start doing my location research. Here's an example in which a show was set in London. And I knew the period, so um, you'll see denoted a little bit by the cars and the clothes on some of the people on the street that we're in a period. And this gives me an idea of what the location, the general location, would look like in that period. Then I'll have another shot that kind of gives me the, a direct area of Lo London that we're going to be in, the brownstone area. And it gives me an idea of what the exterior of those buildings look like. Those are important to me because those windows might be seen on my set um, from the inside, obviously. Um, but um, this could actually be a set design in itself because perhaps the look is as a street. So I, this would be good research directly influencing the designs I'll be doing. Next, I'll find um, a floor plan, a ground plan of the actual buildings that I was just looking at. So these are some of the brownstones in London and what a typical layout is for the ground floor, the first floor, the second floor, and the third floor. For this particular production, we are supposedly in a brownstone that has been turned into apartments. So we're on the ground floor and I understand 
from the plan that I see here that most typically there's an outside door down on the bottom left that lets people into um, kind of a hallway that had stairs going up and those stairs would go up to the rest of the apartments. But then the rest of the rooms and kind of sort of the layout, and that's not going to necessarily fit on the stage. That's pretty long and drawn out. So I'm going to perhaps compact that just a little bit. So the next thing I will do is adapt that floor plan for the stage. I've adapted it. I've shortened it. I've crunched it in. You'll look at this plan and you'll still see in the top left that there's my doorway coming in into the stairway. That is the hallway going upstairs. Um, and then the wall right below that, you'll see a door opening, swinging open, that goes into the apartment. Um, so I've, I've anticipated that they've probably taken those original rooms and added some walls and made a bedroom on the left and a general room in the center and a kitchen upstage under the stairs. Um, so I've sort of adapted that floor plan just a little bit and turned it into an apartment. I've also had to place that on the Pardo stage so I know it'll fit. I know that audience members can actually see that. So at the bottom, you'll see two little balls to the left and to the right with a dotted line going up, kind of showing the sight lines. Those, that's what the viewpoint is of an audience member sitting in those extreme left and right seats. That gives you an idea of what they can see because I have to make sure my set is within those lines so people can actually see it. And I also have a CL, which is a center line, give me an idea of where the actual center of the stage is. Next, I need to take each of the walls that would actually be in that floor plan and move them so that we can actually look at them flat. These are called elevations. So these are front elevations showing the fronts of all the walls, um, all the sides that the audience would actually see. They are showing the full detail. I show um, one side of it and then flip it over and show you the other side because in this set design, the set actually moved. It was on a pivot point and rotated back and forth so the audience got different views of the room and saw opposite sides of walls. You'll note that below each of the wall pieces, I have a floor plan view of each of those pieces from the original floor plan. I'll be required by the uh, scene shop to, re to provide some um, actual construction drawings for pieces. Here's a, a vanity uh, makeup mirror that needs to be used in the bedroom and I have a full drawing for it because we don't have it in stock. So I'm going to um, have it built. And so here are the full drawings for the shop, a front view, a side view, and a back view. You'll note that again at the bottom I have the ground plan view of each of this piece as it rotates. Next, I will take my own information and I'll create a white model. In the white model, I have divorced all color. I'm just building it out of paper and foam core or um, mat board or whatever I choose as a medium, in which I am just kind of giving the idea of the geometric shapes within the set so that a director can start reacting to that and noticing how an actor would have to move around this environment. And I have actually placed an actor, you'll notice, on that stage so the director gets a feeling for the, of the scale of the set to the actor on stage. Next, I'll do a full colored rendering of that set. This is a computer rendering, or I could have done a full color model for it as well in full dimension. Um, it takes about the same amount of time to do a colored model as it does to do a color rendering. But the advantage of having a color rendering like this is, is if I suddenly now want to go back and change all the colors of the walls, or we decided, no, we don't want that door there, let's move it over three inches. If I had a model that I had built, I would have to reconstruct the entire model to do any of those things. On a computer, I can just go back and reprogram it, um, add colors, move a door over, and it will adapt. So um, I find a computer rendering is a lot more useful and a lot more supportive for my process. The next thing is I need to be able to communicate to the scenic artists that are going to actually wind up painting and finishing the look of the set. So this is called a painter's elevation. And this is an actual workup. In other words, it talks about each of the layers of painting, working it up to the finished look. In this one, I have a general lay-in color that's shown um, as step number one. Number two is a wash that'll be laid over, then a glaze. And then number four is a lay-in of the colors, the cornerstone colors. Number five is a spatter 
that's going to be added over the top. Number six is highlights and lowlights. Now you probably don't know what all those mean, and that's not important because um, it's the scenic artists that really know what all those mean, and they'll understand now how to get the effect of what I want in the finished design. I also need to do a, um, a furniture and dressing list that breaks down all of the pieces that will be on the set. This gives an idea of all the furniture pieces. This also covers the dressing, so you'll see draperies on there, you'll see carpets on there. Uh, this is obviously not complete, this is just the first page. So um, it'll have some books on the shelves. Those are all dressing, they may not be ever touched by an actor, um, so they're not a hand prop, but they're a dressing prop. And I have to be in control of all those. I have a full description of each of those. And then on the far right, I have a research reference number that references the pictures that I'm going to present to give them an idea of what I want the real objects to look like. Here's an example of some of the research references. So I had doorknobs that I wanted to have in that uh, apartment. I had a lock that was required on the bottom left. And I also wanted to show what the light plates look like at, for this period. They were push button and not the regular toggle light that we use today. Then I'll be working with the scene shop and all the people who work in the scene shop as they start taking my floor plan and my elevations and start interpreting that into real shapes. The technical director who helps manage the scene shop would be in charge of taking all my front elevations, flipping them over and showing the rear elevations and how they're actually constructed. That's so that the scene shop can actually build them in full scale on stage. I'll also work with the scenic artists who will be painting my set using the, um, the painter's elevations and the workups that I've created so they can help interpret what it's supposed to look like in the finished painted version. I'll also be working with the prop shop. They'll be pulling the furniture pieces and all the uh, dressing pieces to be as close match as they are in the research I presented to them. And they will also construct pieces that um, we do not have in stock or they will acquire them through purchase and rental and they will manipulate them and they will recover furniture. They'll do all the work that needs to take place for all those props and dressing pieces to match the design that I'm looking for. Once we've got the set all completed, it will load in. There'll be a time somewhere in the schedule for the show in which they will load it onto the, onto the stage and assemble it, and then the uh, scenic artist will come in and finish painting it, getting all the detail in. The prop shop will come in and dress the set and put in the curtains and the carpets and get it all finished, and then we'll move to what we call the technical rehearsals. In the technical rehearsals, we have people on stage, whether those are actors or stand-ins, and we will be out in the house um, using the monitors to try get the look that we want. Most of this is showing a lot of the lighting design that's taking place, but the set is back behind. It's been set and dressed and worked into technical rehearsals. Here's an idea of what the show would look like when it's finished. This show has been has run through its technical rehearsals. We're, we're now looking at the last technical rehearsal in which everything's been placed and we're getting the entire vision of what the show will look like on stage for its audience. That hopefully gives you a basic idea of all the steps that a scenic designer goes through in getting a script, doing the full design, working with the director, working with each other's shops, working with all the different talents in getting a set on stage ready for its production.